For those of you that are recruiters and recruitment leaders, how would you like to start a brand new division for a recruiting firm right now in the middle of this economic and health crisis? Would that be fun? Well, that is exactly what Steve Guest did in the depths of the Great Recession, and he did it with raging success. And so, you know, as I'm thinking about who to bring on as guests, I'm really trying to bring folks in who can share inspiring stories and proven strategies for success. So uh, Steve is going to come on and talk with you about five creative ways that recruiters can stand out, add value, and help a ton of people right now while actually growing their business. Uh, so let me tell you just a little bit about Steve before he comes on with us this morning. He's been a recruitment specialist for 14 years uh, in the UK, uh, opening and building new regions, brands, and businesses uh, while specializing in the recruitment of uh, permanent placement, primarily within the, the construction sector. Um, but he'll share a little story with you. He is not your typical recruiter. He is not like me, loud, flamboyant, gregarious. That is not Steve. He is understated. He's insightful. He's methodical. And in fact, he got rejected the first time he applied for a job as recruiter. And yet he became fast, became a top biller and is now training and mentoring recruiting firms all over the world. I wanna say welcome, Steve. Good morning. Thanks for joining us from the UK. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you for having me on here. Yeah, so um, it's midday, it's 2 p.m. for you, is that right? That's correct, yeah. yeah. It's uh, nicely raining and very gray at the moment. Oh. The well, your gardens will be beautiful. That's what my mother always said. The ducks um, will be happy. When I complained about the weather, she was from England and so she always said, the flowers will be happy. Um, mm -hmm. So, before we talk recruiting, I have to ask you about this um, Fuerteventura job that you took right out of college. What's yeah. that all about? Okay, so I was always a academic student. I was always the one that worked very hard, sat at the back of the class um, and studied at school and at home. And I was the quiet, unassuming uh, person that perhaps lacked a bit of confidence. So. I went to be a holiday rep straight out of college because I knew it would push me into being something that I wasn't. It would put me well out of my comfort zone um, and taking part in things like bar crawls and cabaret were at the time probably the furthest away from who I was. Um, so I did it because it made me do something I was frightened of and allowed me to build as a person. Um, well Go on, I was going to say, and I also met my wife, or my now wife, um, and we're going back about 20 years, so something went well. Nice. Apparently she liked the fact that you got up on stage in a little skirt. Did you actually dance in the cabaret? Yeah, badly. <laughs> Joking. I assumed you simply introduced the cabaret. I didn't know you oh, actually no. walked up on stage. No, I was an active member. <laughs> I love it. All right. Mm. Um, so I love that story, not only because it says a lot about, it tells me a lot about who you are and quite frankly, why you are a top biller, um, which is why your book, which I am not quite to the end, but I'm devouring it about how you became a top biller. And a lot of it involves getting out of your comfort zone. And I just think that is so timely for what we are going through right now globally with the coronavirus pandemic. Every single one of us is out of our comfort zone every day. Yeah. And um, so, you know, today we're here to talk about how to be successful in the midst of all that. And I think just it's a really good reminder um, that sometimes it's good to be out of your comfort zone and, and good things can happen. So um, how did you build a, a division from scratch in the middle of the recession? Um, it was very difficult, to be honest. So I'd recruited for construction staff for a couple of years. So I'd already built a bit of a reputation for who I was and within my market. Um, I moved to set up the division in Birmingham in 2008. Um, new brand, new division, new region, and six months restrictive covenants, which immediately takes away my current client base because I wasn't allowed to approach them. So it was very much about going in with a very open mind, 
learning to work with my clients and candidates in a market where construction was probably the hardest hit industry, certainly in the UK. Yeah, here too. I was, I was a perm specialist, so there was no perm roles, or if there were, they were very specific, um, and everyone was fighting to work on them. So it was a time where you had to build empathy with your clients. You had to be sympathetic with their business and what was going on in the whole um, kind of economy. And you've got to get across that everybody's in it together. So I'm here to help you find the right person for your business, or I'm trying to find you the right role when you're out, out of work and unemployed. But actually, it was about making sure we both come out at the end. We both survive the downturn. If you need something and I can deliver on that, make sure you come to me because I will work the hardest out of any of the competition to make sure you get quality and value. Um, so it's about working with your clients. It's about building that relationship. Those 12 months, certainly in the first year, were massively difficult, but actually formed the foundation and the bedrock for the office and the business to actually do exceptionally well because it was based on relationships at the start and not on a sales pitch or a KPI. Yeah. So one of my favorite quotes is by um, Warren Buffett, and he said it takes 20 years to build a strong reputation and five minutes to tear it down. And throughout your book and, and through our first conversation on LinkedIn and then over Zoom uh, last week, uh, one thing that comes through with you in spades is that you first look at somebody as a human and you really try to understand what's going on in their life. Yeah. on their side of the, the desk, whether it's a client or a candidate. The other thing I really like about a theme throughout your book is you've got a very firm focus on both clients and candidates. Because of course, if you've been in the recruiting industry long enough, you understand your clients will become your candidates and your candidates will become your clients. And yeah. um, so what, um, oh, before we talk, so I can't wait for you to share your five proven strategies that recruiters can use right now in this really tight economy. Um, but before we get to that, I'd like you to tell everybody, what have you been up to this week? OK, um, so I wanted to give something back to the recruitment industry. It served me well for a very long time and appreciate there's a lot of people out there that are in an uncomfortable situation. They're not sure where to go or what to do. They're perhaps lacking a bit of structure. So I put a post out on LinkedIn on Friday last week saying that I've cleared out my diary this week, apart from today, um, and my time is basically yours. So if you're a recruitment consultant looking for some help or some advice, you can book in for a half an hour one-to-one -one consultant chat uh, and basically talk about anything and everything that you want to, and I'll add value, value where I can. So I was expecting probably, I don't know, 15, 20 calls over the week. And I'm roughly averaging about 14, 15 calls a day, every day. And I'm stacked out all week. And it has been an amazing week so far. Hugely empowering. Um, it's been nice to be able to offer some value uh, and actually help people that are perhaps at a low ebb or, or just need a bit of motivation or an arm around their um, shoulders. Well, and you said you've talked to people in Australia, South Africa, America. Um, what are the common what what are recruiters going through that around the world? What what are some of the biggest concerns and, and struggles that they are having right now? I think the biggest things are, are they going to have a market when they go back? If they go back and perhaps they've been on furlough, will they be forgotten? Will the market have changed that much that they're worried that they haven't done enough while they're sat at home and online or not having access face to face to their market? Um, and they're obviously concerned that they need to be doing as much as they can at the moment while they're sat at home to actually improve things for when they go back. Right. Well, and um, for those of us so about probably half our viewers uh, today are recruiters and the other half, simply because of what I do and, and we speak so much to freelancers, consultants and job seekers, half of them have never been recruiters. And so I want to let all of you know that wonder what the heck do recruiters do? Well, they work straight commissions. What that means is, and we're talking mostly staffing agency, which is the world 
um, that Steve and I live in. And that means if they don't place somebody, they make no money. And so in the midst of this economic downturn, when we talk about business drying up, even for the recruiters that aren't on furlough right now, there's no money coming in. And so for you to give up a week of your life to help other recruiters is, is impressive. For recruiters who aren't making any money right now, who are trying to figure out how to feed their families, you have some suggestions for them that involve giving back. Um, so I'd love for you to share those five suggestions and then can they afford to do that? They're trying to feed their families. How can they give back and help other people when they're trying to make some money for their families? Mm -hmm. Okay, so yes, I agree that a lot of the five that I've got here are about building value and content. Um, there are ways of and means of making money through each option or we, each of the stages that I've got there. Um, if we start going through them, the big one and the, the one that's probably being mostly discussed this week is all about personal brand. Everything at the moment is personal brand. And if you're sat at home and you're not able to contact your clients or candidates because you're on furlough, you can still work on your personal brand. You can build relationships with clients and candidates by showing your core values, what you hold dear as a person, um, your motivators, your mindset, um, how you're staying motivated while sat at home, how you're balancing working from home and home life, um, going through things that build your personal brand, creating a blog, writing a book, um, and becoming a social media influencer, building up that amount of people that follow you can allow you to earn money through other sources while you're actively promoting who you are. Um, second one I've got as adding value in your current market. So this is for you to be able to create you as an individual as being that key person of influence in the market that you work in. So you start doing research, you should create content about the field of work. So for me, construction related news, you're going after areas where the market is busy. So healthcare, hospitals, areas where they need staff to be able to provide the service to cope with the current pandemic and everything that's going on. You are facilitating a service, but you're also promoting yourself as a consultant that can help and deal with the situation. Um, and you're still building your brand as a key person and the go-to person. Number three, I've got consultative value. So you are able to offer value back to your market by way of CV coaching. You can help people that may well be looking to move when the markets come back. So you can do CV services. You could rewrite CVs. Um, you can help them with their LinkedIn profile interview techniques you could be interviewing on zoom to give people that are perhaps nervous at interview the ability to get over that hurdle so they interview better when you get them their next opportunity and it helps you improve your process because you start to understand individual concerns about being on the other side of an interview um Sorry. Could you talk about CVs and to our American uh, viewers, we call them resumes over here. Okay. <laughs> um, a recruiter that I worked with, I started out in IT consulting and a recruiter I worked with thought that the guy's name was Curriculum Vitae. <laughs> Pick up the phone. Hello, may I please speak with Curriculum Vitae? Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so helping candidates with CVs and interviewing and resumes, that is a wonderful yeah. gift. It could also be from the client perspective. Perhaps clients aren't great at the recruitment process they do their day job excellently but they're not used to questioning someone on their job history and seeing whether they bring value to the role they're recruiting for so it may well be you start talking to your clients and say is your recruitment process efficient how can we improve that and can i be of service to you to make that better yes. um you can be a career coach obviously as well so talking to candidates that perhaps feel a bit stuck where they are offer them calls to say, okay, well, what's the next stage? Where are we heading? And you can point them in the right direction. Uh, number four, something I had to do back in 2008, I went in as a perm recruitment consultant, the perm market was not there. So I ended up having to uh, cover the freelance side. 
Um, my methodical structured approach does not necessarily suit freelance. <laughs> in order to create the market, I had to change my direction and look at freelance. But I also looked at other areas within construction. So I do commercial roles, surveyors, buyers, planners, estimators. But actually, I started looking at receptionists, administrators, HR, account staff, still within contractors, but it changed my field of specialism and then allows you to have a wider market because you can go to local SMEs um, and talk to them about their support and back office staff because you start building up a contingent candidate workforce. Um, and the fifth one, I've got change service offering. So something that I'm currently doing at the moment, I've recruited permanent construction staff for 14 years. I'm now looking to help consultants, recruitment businesses, small recruitment businesses actually be more efficient and be better at what they do. So what I learned from this week is there is a huge market for me to go and support those individuals and help coach and mentor them to be bigger and better. So um, I was just laughing out loud about the freelance and consulting because that's the world that I grew up in and that's the world I lived in. I have done some permanent placement, but most of my career was in uh, placing consultants. And um, so I don't want to put words into your mouth just to help people understand in 10 seconds flat, what's the difference between perm permanent placement recruitment and freelance recruitment? For me, if I was going to put it in one sentence, if it's from a consultant, a recruitment consultant perspective, Permanent is structured, slower, and temp recruitment is fast. It's quick off the mark. It's having names in your head that you can get there to start Monday. And it's the reactivity of working. Yeah. Does that answer the question? It does, absolutely. And so that's less for recruiters and more for our viewers who are looking for jobs because, and you and I both know this, we've both been in the, in the industry long enough, the first jobs to come back on the heels of COVID-19 are going to be contract, which is yeah. why you had to shift your business during the Great Recession. Yeah. And so I just want to alert everybody that's, that's listening in. Um, if you want a new, new career, a new job, you really do need to be open to considering freelance and contract. You don't have to take it, but be open to it because there are going to be many employers who are skittish about making long-term commitments to anything. And they're going to be more comfortable bringing you on either on a project basis or perhaps temp to perm. And so, um, but when a recruiter calls you, man, it is chop, 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 chop. Um, yeah. I used to compete with 15 other vendors and I had 48 hours to put my three best candidates in front of them, sometimes 24 hours. So anyway, couldn't resist that. It's We've so fast. Yeah, it gives it me is. headache thinking of temp, temp recruitment. Oh, which is why recruiters want to get on and off the phone with you in five minutes, not because they don't want to talk to you for an hour. They don't have time. And if they don't get those candidates submitted, they lose the opportunity and you don't have a job and they don't make any money. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of that's that world. Um, all right. So we've got about uh, 12 minutes left and I would love to take questions from our viewers today. So uh, if you're listening in and, and you're with us live at our bez.com forward slash live chat away, Steve's here with you for the next 10 minutes, bring some questions. Um, you know, he's been generously giving of himself all over the world this week. And I think you're probably a little exhausted, but you seem high energy today. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's the copious amounts of caffeine, to be honest. <laughs> um, so while we're waiting for folks to bring questions uh, forward, I, um, you talk about changing your recruitment type and changing your service offering. And during the Great Recession, you leaned in and built that recruiting industry, um, we leaned left. And so we actually, because our search business had dried up, we, we just before the stock market uh, crashed and the global reset and the housing market crashed, um, we had started building on an online course for job seekers. And our intention was just to help people. Everything you're talking about, um, adding value, you know, helping people even though they don't fit a job that you have right now, an open position, just trying to help people as much as possible. And while you can't have coffee, virtual or otherwise, you can't help everybody. Um, 
we're on a mission to figure out how to, and I, I believe we've actually done that with all of our online tools. But um, as you're talking about all of these things for recruiters to do, your sort of undercurrent there is that the money will follow. And yeah. you and I both know that, um, you know, but that's kind of tough for people to know. I'll, I'll never forget. I was a rookie recruiter. Quite frankly, I was about to get fired because I wasn't, I was terrified of the phones. I was terrible on the phones. I was insecure. I didn't know what I was doing and I was about to get fired. And fortunately, my boss figured out what was wrong. And he came in one day and sat down and he looked at me and he said, are you having fun? And the truth was no, but I didn't say that to him. I said, yes. And he said, do you want to succeed as a recruiter? And I said, yes. And he said, then you need to understand something. We are not the Red Cross. You cannot help everybody. Yeah. And I got to tell you, my heart dropped to the floor because I thought I took a job helping people as a recruiter. And to have him tell me I couldn't help everybody was just, I didn't like it. And you know what? It was a defining moment in my career. He lit a fire in my belly and I smiled through my teeth and I said, okay. And he said, take the weekend. I want you to think about it. And if you still want the job, it's yours. And I came back fighting. But yeah. I knew I was going to eventually find a way to be a phenomenal recruiter and help everybody. And lucky for me, technology has enabled us to do that with online courses for job seekers and freelancers and consultants. Um, you know, but it, but, it, but it took a while. So what if you're a recruiter and you're trying to be smart with your time? That's my question that I'm going to get to. <laughs> when they're thinking about branding and helping all the people that they can right now, how can they do it in a smart way so that they do one thing and help as many people as possible? Yeah, I think it's for me, and obviously we've been talking for a couple of weeks now, it's about having a defined structure for me. And it's about putting value on your time. If you don't value your time, somebody else will value it more than you do. And you'll end up working their agenda, not yours. So it's vital that you have a structure and a set plan every day. And you have probably three to five main goals or targets for that day that will achieve your goals or get you a step towards that. And it's about knowing where to put them and how to do it to enable you to start billing more smartly. The moment you start valuing your time, actually, it will start paying dividends because you're working on where you need to be. Um, so for me recruiters that are sat at home that have the time now to be able to build better client lists start building better relationships because it's a conversation and not a sales pitch mm -hmm. it's about getting to know your clients getting to know your candidates what they're looking to do what their concerns are for the next few months and how you can help alleviate some of them concerns for them to know that you're with them if you're building a candidate pool your client knows that you're going to have people ready to go for when they get back on site or they get back in the office. You've got to start putting yourself out there to be able to offer that value and alleviate the concerns because there is a lot of concern at the moment. Mm -hmm. So any elements you can elevate yourself to be the person that can help and find solutions yeah. is the best way forward. Well, and um, your story about what you did during the Great Recession, you stayed very focused on the construction industry and you, you set yourself apart as the go-to person and resource for all things construction industry. So you resisted the temptation, which I unfor I made a mistake during the recession. I, I, I thought, oh my gosh, I've got to help everybody. And so I went wide and skinny and shallow and I got very... Um, stretched very thin. And I was trying to rewrite resumes for anybody who asked, because of course, as a recruiter, you can, you can write a resume for a million dollar executive and a production worker. Um, mm -hmm. And so this time I'm being a lot more careful about how I spend my time. And when I'm helping to rewrite resumes, you know, I'm doing it for consultants that are in my zone, um, you know, and, and what I'm doing to help the rest is live streaming every day. Then I can help a million people and blogging and so just stay very focused on your industry. Um, so we've got a question from John and he wants to know, what is one thing that I can do for my candidates right now that you think will make the most sense? For me, it's keeping that relationship going. So you need to be an offering that consultative approach 
that we don't know what's going to happen within the market, regardless of market or sector. But the fact is you're on their side. So you can help support them with their CV, with their profile, with their concerns, with their um, thought process in terms of moving forward. But you're keeping in contact with them to know that when the market changes, regardless of whether it's a freelance opportunity, a permanent role, it might be interim, you will give them a call and let them have the option to say yes or no. Nice. So we've got a great question from Alex. You're going to love this one. He's brand new to the recruitment business, enjoying it immensely, even during this tough time. But at this point, he's a generalist. He works for a firm that does all things all over the country. Um, with no industry focus or specialty, do you think that he should tr pick a specialty at this time or keep moving forward as a generalist? I've got two schools of thought there. So for me, a specialist, you allow to track market movement a lot better. A specialist will know if, if, a, if a surveyor moves from that contractor, they've left a hole behind. So I can help fill the QS that's left but I can also backfill the opportunity because it will all move around in one continuous cycle. From a generalist perspective, it's not as fluid. So it's very much about having lots of candidates and having the best candidate to sell into a position. Both have their positives and negatives. I've worked in a specialist niche for 14 years and you become the specialist in that area, which I suppose from personal background I can only really comment on that there are some very good generalist recruiters back in 2008 I went from being a very special specialist niche consultant and added a more generalist part to what I did so you're almost combining a specialist sector but generalist roles and specialist roles I'm not sure whether that's answered your question it's a very difficult yeah. time to have one direction or the other it is a it's a very difficult time in this market. And so my two cents worth, because I've done both, mostly I was specialty IT and marketing, and I even even further niched it down in IT and went very deep in the quality and project management space um, and what have you. So I've, I've gone very, very niche. I've also done the generalist thing. And um, there is there is tremendous value, I would argue, if you can pick a specialty, you work at a generalist firm. And what that means is you can go after any business that drops in your lap. But I do recommend you, you talk with your business owner and think, is there one industry that you'd like to focus particularly on? There's no reason why your generalist firm, why you can't catch every opportunity that comes, but mm -hmm. have a vertical inside your, you know, maybe healthcare industry, technology would be two very smart industries and just start digging in deeper there. Yeah. It was a hard thing for me to wrap my head around early in recruiting that I could have a phone call at 8.30 in the morning and say, hello, I'm looking for a quality assurance manager. And at 8.45 say, I'm looking for a Java developer. It's actually okay. You can develop a reputation in a couple of different markets. Um, but the value that uh, Steve was talking about, the deeper you go in one area, the more people know you, you become the go-to person. And when it comes time to fill a position, you know where the people are, you know who to call. It's, it makes your job easier. Um, but in this market, being open is probably a good thing. So yeah. with that, we've got a one minute left and you are giving away the gift of one of your most popular tools. Speaking mm -hmm. of structure and routine, what are you giving everybody today? So over the last 14 years, I've developed what I call the monthly planner. It helps consultants structure your day, your week, your month, uh, and keeps you focused and process driven. And you can get that by going to the uh, the replay or anywhere you're following us right now at this live. We'll have a link in there for you to get that. Thank you so much for giving that. Um, it's the stuff I can't stand, but I have to do in my business. And having a tool to help me with that structure is brilliant. My husband doesn't need that tool because it's all in his head. I don't know how he does it. Um, so Steve, as we wrap things up, I've got a fabulous question. I just want to acknowledge Rick asked me, um, He's perm. He's been perm his entire career. He keeps hearing that contractors are going to lead the recovery. Um, oh, and he's asking me if I would consider a presentation on what it takes to get into that space. Yes, I will. I will do a live on what it takes to shift your business and how to build up a freelance and contract 
a business. So let's talk offline about that. And I will definitely do a live on that to help you with that. So thank you everyone for tuning in, Steve. Thank you. And, and I'm a little thank disappointed you. that your kids didn't come running into the room. <laughs> um, they were under strict orders. It was great to have you. Thank you so much. And, and have a really good rest of the week and, and have a really good weekend. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you. Bye-bye.